Good evening, everybody. Hopefully everybody can hear me tonight. Uh, I got a bunch of things to discuss and uh, talk about today. I think the first one, I'm going to tell you about a survey eBay sent me. And I don't know who has received this survey or not, but it was in my email through eBay, in eBay itself. And it made it sound like from the header, it's going to take you 20 minutes to do... <clears throat> Excuse me, I've been on the phone all day. Uh, but it's going to take you 20 minutes to do, and, and they're trying to judge on your feelings on eBay and things like that is the way I, I took the survey. But after taking the survey, all eBay was trying to get at is how much of their business is on different sites. Instead of asking even a single question on what does eBay get right or anything like that, nothing like that. No questions on what could they do to improve, nothing. All they wanted to know is where we were selling our stuff at, how much of it is sold here, how much of it is sold there. That's literally the gist of the entire 20 minutes worth of the survey. Now, I usually do all those surveys if they send them. And I literally, since there was no boxes to put your opinions on things, I, you know, whenever they had a free space to say, you know, make a comment, I just told them totally what I thought. <clears throat> I would recommend anybody who gets that survey to do the exact same thing. I brought up the issue on prices because they were talking about does price matter to you and fees. And I brought up the fact uh, when they were asking for percentages of where we sell at, I was very truthful. I said, you know, I put in that three years ago it was almost all eBay. But the way they keep changing the policies in favor of the stockholder or the shareholders and <clears throat> line in their pockets doesn't do me any good. I, I'm really getting sick of being nickeled and dimed to death by eBay. As anybody who can look at and manage payments knows, that is nothing... <clears throat> excuse me. I've been on the phone with Shopify issues and things like that, trying to get everything situated all day long. But um, <clears throat> eBay's biggest problem is the nickel and diamond, in my opinion. They don't listen to anything we have to say unless it's so detrimental to their business that too many sellers just stopped doing it, like calling out the, the ad blocker last year. That had to have hurt them because they did roll back on it, and they did reach out to all kinds of people. That was where they were banking their money on, is that. Now they're banking it on selling classifieds and um, <clears throat> obviously managed payments, which is going to get them billions of dollars from what I understand. Again, this isn't, just, this isn't going to be a dog on eBay thing, but platform's okay. It's, it's the, the people running it, and I'm going to include the people running it now, the new people, because all the changes already with the new people in charge, cutting affiliate links, cutting a huge opportunity to take some of Amazon's customers away, they didn't do it. So, you know, it leaves me in the air on, on any of the moves they're doing. The managed payments, the third-party app aspect of it, they're going to make it hard for anybody to go to a third party and do your listings on another platform with an API that is just horrid, that's that's it's not feature complete. It means it's missing best it's missing a ton of stuff that it's had before. And now they're acting like, well, we'll see what we can do. You know, and then they they the person who is in charge of the API isn't there anymore. So, you know, and then the board's stepping down again. It happens when somebody new takes over, but right off the bat you know, my opinions on what I thought would happen, I said if they cut the, the affiliates and this and that, I, that's exactly what they did. You know, and, and I hate to be feeling like, you know, my thoughts on that were right, but they, I don't see any other way around it. Everything I see, they're still pushing to get the money in from, from managed payments. And you can't do managed payments on eBay's own uh, API through Shopify. Shopify, one of the biggest. Now, we, WooCommerce, and there's there's a bunch of other ones. So don't get me wrong. There are some other ones. But Shopify, from what I see, their integration with Google is the best. And that's part of the reason, as well as their pricing structure, the help structure, and things like that. eBay, if they don't fix the API, come the end of July... Anybody who's got their listings in through there isn't going to be able to do much. With I mean, best offer is, like, excellent. That's, like, one of the best features. Why on earth wouldn't you have that on an API to cross your items up there? Now, for those interested in Shopify, trying to own your own listings, again, that's that's the gist on, on getting your listings off eBay. Whether you do Inkfrog or wherever you do, own your listings. Don't Don't trust one platform with your listings. 
Um, you know, there was, there was a day when I fully believed what eBay said and trusted them. But these days, all it seems to be, and again, I know most corporations are like that. They want to line the pockets of all the execs and their buddies. That's all I ever see, and that's all that ever seems to happen. Toys R Us is a perfect example. You know, there's tons of other ones out there. Um, but it's it's saddening that, you know, I go to help my own business, and eBay is the holding point on why I haven't been able to rush out and get Shopify going because I, I want the features that we have on eBay. You know, it, it's crazy that it's not there. And I, I can assure you that's the case because I've talked to dozens of people. Even some of the other apps that eBay supplies an API for have issues right now. They can't do the same exact thing. So there's a lot of people who are crossing their items who do use Best Offer who are, are semi-screwed. Again, eBay's doing all of, all this comes into play and we're going into third, fourth quarter here. You know, it's like last year, they did the, the manage, or the um, um, uh, ad thing last year, just before fourth quarter. They did the big change when they rolled out everything just before fourth quarter. What are they doing right now? They're, they're the last group of, or, or the uh, yeah, I think it is the last group of people who I've heard are going to get notices for managed payments. Everybody's going to get one um, notice um, is going to be in October. Again, right up in fourth quarter again. What are they thinking? I mean, all you got to do is look at eBay's fourth quarter numbers last year and the year before to see that they sold less items both of those years in a row, and it's it's increasing. And that has nothing to do with the pandemic or anything else. That's just eBay. You know, everything they do these days is scaring people and making people leave the site. <clears throat> you know, it, it it's getting to be a, a bit more than, than, you know, any other site. The most issues, the most things i got to watch are all on eBay now. And it's only half my business, so why am I spending more time having to deal with eBay than having to do with everything else we do? It's because of all the issues they got going. All the other sites are not a problem to link in with uh, Shopify. You know, we just got approved for Facebook Marketplace. I've got Instagram sales channel open right now. So, you know, all these other options are there. And had eBay not been doing everything they've been doing in the last few years, I would have never even worried about branching out this far. But at this point, it, it's grown our business, and I'm not reliant on eBay like I was before. I'm not reliant on the only thorn in my side. And I know Amazon has issues, but I never have issues like this. It's never an issue that affects me in many different categories, in many different ways, all at the same time, right before third, fourth quarter. I mean, we ramp up in third quarter. I mean, uh, hopefully most people do the exact same thing and they ramp up. You're getting ready for fourth quarter. Right now, I'm all, all I am worrying about is getting everything <clears throat> broadcast and going to have the best darn fourth quarter is all that I've got in my mind right now. Might not happen, but that's my, that's my goal. Every year we've gotten better. You know, Shopify is, is my hopeful goal to get in there. And as I said, I'm on the phone, or I actually have a video conference with, uh, somebody from Inkfrog tonight. Um, I got a half hour conference time blocked off with them. Um, and I've been, I'm talking to uh, hit, the guy from Hit Platform, uh, Josh, and I don't remember what his title is, but I want to thank he's head of marketing for the Hit Platform. And he reached out to me, and, and they've got a new program going out. Um, maybe I'll get some insight on what they plan on doing, because I've heard they're going to add more categories to it. Um, you know, and I'm happy with the service I get from them. I haven't had any issues whatsoever. Money rolls perfectly, fees, everything. You know, I, I haven't had any complaints about that at all. The only ones, again, I, it always goes back to eBay these days. Just like that survey that they send out, and the survey is only geared towards figuring out where we're selling at. That's all I can get out of it. Anybody who takes it, you'll see the same thing. There's a lot of questions, how much of your stores or how much of your business is from here, 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 what percentage is eBay, what percentage is uh, Etsy, what percentage is whichever platform you say you sell on. You know, it, it's just research, free research they're getting. It's not a real survey in my book, you know. But <clears throat> anyway, let's see who's on. I'm going to tell you about my first ever PayPal issue, um, and it cost me hours of time over something as simple as one word used in a... Um, description on an invoice. That's it. And it was something I was paying for. They limited my account. Did a whole. I spent hours dealing with this stupid thing. I'm going to go into that in just a minute here. Let's see who's all here. Hey, Penny, how are you doing? Red River Group, welcome. Hey, Bob. Good evening, Mr. Hale. Sunday, fun day. Pamela Saban, how are you doing? Gail, how are you doing? Hey, Michelle, how's it going, Michelle? 
Jeffrey D in the house. I got Baltal right below. Uh, let's see here. What somebody's already saying a question. I did the same survey, Jeffrey. So Jeffrey, I'm sure you would agree that it wasn't what, wanting to know what eBay was doing to help you or anything like that. It was more geared towards features that other sites may offer and which other sites you sell on and how much of your business is on other sites. You know, anybody can basically figure some of that out by looking at the numbers. I mean, eBay, I don't know. They're just, they're wanting inside information and gearing it towards something it's not. We're helping them with, with um, you know, business plans for the future, I would say. Hey, Annie, how are you doing tonight? <clears throat> Sunday fun day started it, but stopped. I almost stopped, too, because the percentage one was kind of screwy. It, it, I just it, there was a couple ones in there that just the way they had it set up was awful. Grand Canyon, Arizona, eBay off grid. How are you doing? Wubba lubba dub dub. How are you doing as well? Zo, Zopies. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Cornelius, how are you doing? Everything has gone fairly well. Um, my son, my youngest son, is now eighteen. Um, they had their graduation. Um, you know, so he didn't go to anything because it was a drive up with one car, your family in the car. He walked out, would have taken a picture. We could have got out for a minute, taken a few pictures and then walked out. You had like a minute, a couple minutes to do every. It was just nothing that I wanted to be involved. In. He didn't want to do it at all either. So um, sad. You know, he missed prom. He missed all that stuff. He turned 18 and, you know, we can't have some big get together, but um at this point, uh, we've been tracking the numbers. I'm going to let employees come back in. Um, the amount of, of uh, cases here is way down to almost nothing. Um, you know, there's still, uh, I think, of four or five deaths a day or something like that. It's a real low number, nothing around here. So he is with friends, a couple of friends that work for us. They're going to be here. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know what else to do with the issue at this point, And it seems to be fairly safe. We've talked to the doctor and the whole works. Uh, still can't get a test. He may have had it already. He was very sick um, when this first started. I, 103 temperature. He was sick for 11 days, which he had all the symptoms, but there was no test back then. The tests that they are offering around here now, I, I try to get an answer on whether they test if you've had it. But it sounds like it only tests if you have it right this very second. I don't know if they do the antibody test or anything like that. So anyway, where are we? Tucson. I have been there before. Or Tucson, Phoenix. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I've been to Tucson. I've been to Phoenix once too, actually. Question. In a video a long time ago, you said you were monitoring eBay Australia and they were doing a premium store that basically gave unlimited listings for that premium store price. Um, it, England has one for, um, I think it's $657 it equates to, if I'm not mistaken. I did the numbers on it once before. I talked to somebody about that. It's like we got here, but you know, I've got the anchor store, 10,000 listings. It's just like they added another level or two above it. That's the only difference. I have no idea where they're going to go with that here. You know they don't do anything to save you money in my book, at least with all the nickel and diamond and this fee and that fee and you know all the other stuff that goes on. They're going to penalize you and charge you more if you mess up something and you know all the other ways that they can figure a charge out of you. Um, it's gotten kind of crazy in all honesty. I, I would rather just pay, pay one set flat fee and be done with it. Anybody who sells on Amazon, a business account on Amazon is 40 bucks, 39.99 and I can list 400,000 items if I want to for that $39.99. Unless they sell, I don't pay a dime other than my 40 bucks. I mean, that's it, you know. It, it, it's it's crazy that I pay 300 just for 10,000 listings and then I pay 5 cents for 20, 30, 40,000 more listings above and beyond that. So, <clears throat> you know, there's going to come a point where you'll make, more, or at least us, where we'll probably make more money selling off of eBay. And the fees will be, uh, I mean, we'll be saving at one point, if we hit a certain amount, over $1,000, um, uh, you know, a month in fees. You know, I got to equate taking certain items off of eBay and putting them somewhere else based on the fact that I can cut my fees down $1,000 a month. You know, and just put certain items up on eBay that'll be enough to, you know, go with that. And that's that's kind of what we're looking into now. 
You know, of course, that was never my my goal before, but you know, I've I've got to go where I'm making more money. That's that's twelve thousand dollars a year I could save by moving our business around. So maybe I would make four thousand dollars less, but I'm you know saving twelve thousand. So in the end result, I'm making eight thousand dollars more for removing some items from eBay. You know, and with Shopify, I can list as many as I want and not list them on eBay if I don't want, and I'll be able to rotate certain items in to keep my listings down to that 10,000 mark so they won't get another dime out of me. That's what we've been talking about here at this point. Um, you know, once they start rolling back, and I, I think they're still doing it this month, rolling back, charging me the fees again, I'm going to be paying hundreds and hundreds of dollars more the minute they do that. You know, with the 50,000 free listings, I'm not paying anything extra. So, you know, it's nice to have that extra income. Had that not happened, I may not have even thought about that either. Um, because everything else we've been working on, and, and now it looks like, you know, I could just lower my amount of items and pull out some of these items and just put them somewhere else and not have to worry about it. So, you know, the, the biggest goal for anybody listening and watching or anything else is to grow your business and make money, you know, and, and eBay now is, is costing me more than any other site by a huge amount just to get the items in front of somebody. And then, you don't have a hundred percent guarantee anybody's even seeing your items, and if you do manage or if you do the promoted listings through eBay, they don't guarantee they're going to show your items at all. But when you do it, you're paying the fee. Supposedly, you only pay it if it clicks through. But if they're not showing a normal one, it's it, it's just gotten to be again insane with what they're doing with all that. But you know, you can't tell them what to do because they don't really have any visions except what they think is the best thing and they're not sellers they don't know the market apparently walmart doesn't know the market so hiring somebody who's a walmart specialist makes no freaking sense to make him run the company unless you want your company to be like walmart and walmart's just amazon a copy of amazon anybody who's sold something on walmart is basically the same thing it's just a big corporate copy of it and that's all I, it looks like ebay's going it they're only going to be a a the platform they're gonna they're selling off classifieds forbes is talking about maybe eight or nine million or eight or nine billion dollar windfall from this and i can almost bet you what they'll do with that half of that's going into stock buybacks and that means that the stockholders will make more money the ceo himself will make more money as well as the cfo chief financial officer all the people in the in the big wigs will make a lot more money if they do buybacks because it'll overvalue the stock and then they'll they'll get a huge windfall he could quit in two you know two years or less raise it from selling this off and bringing in to manage payments and they got some huge windfall and make a ton of money and not even care who knows when you give people that incentive that they can get a quick out and make a ton of money you know a lot of people would do that you know Yeah, I'm back to the Wubba Lubba Dubba, uh, Wubba Lubba Dub Dub's question there. You know, it's been going on over there. England is where it's going on. Um, in fact, hang on. I'm going to write that down because I talked to a guy. Hang on. I talk to somebody from England probably once a week, twice a week. Uh, let me ask ask about, again about that. I mean, I I gave up. There's no. I mean, I know it works. I know they're doing it. It was as I said, six fifty seven or something like that. Hang on, I'm just writing it down. Unlimited listings. You know, even with unlimited listings, if if that was in pounds, it's like eight or nine hundred dollars a month. You know, it's it's. Let's see, that would be like me spending six thousand extra a month. Still on eBay that I earn six thousand a year. I'm sorry, cross it out. Six thousand a year, five hundred a month, six thousand a year, to keep my massive amount of inventory on eBay. Or I could not pay that fee, and whenever something sells on my other sites, I pay less and go that route. I mean, eBay is just I, I, I'm, it's it's bothersome, and I, I I wish this isn't the case because I, I do like eBay. I love the site, and I love selling vintage and collectible. It's only neat. It's, it's totally neat to see what they sell for and to have some historical or vintage item, something rare, unique up there. And it's it's a thrill to see it sell. I like sometimes when there's some real high dollar item, I'll sit there at the last, say, two minutes of that specific one. I don't do it all the time, but if there's something I'm really into, I'll watch my own listing and see. And I love when it goes, it's like at 200 and then the last 10 or so seconds, it's up to like fifteen hundred dollars and stuff those are the ones that i really get off and that's it's a big rush to me i don't know what it is for everybody else but 
you know, but I'm into the item that I'm selling. I'm into that item. It's not like I do it just for the money. I, it's a thrill to know I, I scored some relic from the past. It's 100, 200, 300 years old. And it's, it's this rare thing that everybody wanted. That, that's a thrill to me. Are you a collector? Good evening as well. Um, again, for those in Patreon, tomorrow live show, 2, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I don't think he's on here, but I'm going to do a, a um, store review at the end. In the beginning, we're going to look at some images, and we're going to price out, and I'll show you how to pull up prices and get prices on one-of-a-kinds and stuff for the postcards for those. Um, I do have another video that's done, too, and it's a bolo for Patreon as well, too. Bolo video is going to be up here tomorrow on YouTube as well. That one is almost done. I have somebody I can have edit again, so uh, my time is getting a little better right now. Um, I'll give an update, too, on where we're going, and I still want to get that story, what happened to me with PayPal. Again, first real bad situation that made me feel like they really didn't give a pardon me. I won't say the word, but I think you know what I'm going at. Let's get to some questions, too. I'm selling more and more on Recreary. Now, I've heard that from quite a few people, um, but it's it has to be high-in-demand items are what seems to be going from everybody I've talked to. You may have a different uh, aspect on that, but that's what I'm seeing. And same with Poshmark. It looks like you know, a lot of people are doing Poshmark instead of on certain clothing items that do tend to trend uh, higher on Poshmark. Um, from all what I've personally seen, again, people talk to me. I do look at people's pages here and there. I have sat down with uh, uh, some Poshmark sellers too, you know, not recently, but I have. So I do know quite a bit. We did it for a little while. I just didn't like all the sharing and it wasn't me. I'm not a clothing person, but I did. I have used the platform. So anyway. Uh, promoted listings actually hurt views because most ad blockers still block them. I, you know, eBay told me I was lying. No, that wasn't true. I'm the one who blew out eBay on the, on the ad blocker, and they had to admit that it was blocking them, and they didn't add all that stuff until after the fact, until my video hit the, hit it. I, I talked to eBay about the ad blocker in person on a video conference call with everybody in charge of the departments. Nobody there from IT though, of course. Why, why would you want IT in something that's an IT issue? You know, they wouldn't even let me talk to anybody, wouldn't refer anything to me. They wouldn't answer any IT-related questions whatsoever. None. None whatsoever. And, and that's the truth. The, the person who I talk to sometimes watches my videos. He can't say I'm lying. That's the truth. They couldn't even answer basic questions on why you would want your items to show up on Google. They didn't know that. They, 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 nobody in the room could tell me, well, why would you want them on Google? What does that have to do with it? They had no clue about ranking on Google. SEO, I had to bring the whole thing up. I, I, I said, I'm not going to sit here and explain it to them, but it was it was crazy that they came into a conversation thinking I didn't know what I was talking about. It's the only thing I can take from it, you know. But, you know, I was right. Ad blockers still blocks them. They did try to put that scroll bar where some of the ads scroll, sometimes you'll see, up on the top, and they scroll from left to right, but yet the rest of the page goes top to bottom. So... You know, I don't, I've never looked at something scrolling, you know, left to right or even right to left across a page because those are like 99.9% .9 of the time, always an ad. Why would anybody even look at those? So if that's the type of promoted listings they're, they're doing, you know, Google doesn't even block your, your ad if you're promoting it. You get the promoted and you get your regular one. Google doesn't do that, but eBay has to. And of course, if Google and eBay have some issues. If you can look those up, you can figure it out on your own too with that. Um... But I told eBay, and they're telling me that it was less than 2% and all these figures. Again, I have an IT degree. I went to school. We had to research all kinds of stuff like this. We, we had to figure out how to whitelist and all kinds of stuff to do with being able to block stuff on the Internet. We hack and all that kind of stuff is part of the class. I took a safety class. I have Safety Plus, Net Plus, A Plus, and I have my Microsoft cert for uh, uh, networking and uh, servers as well, too. So... I know what I'm doing. It's it's just it's it's crazy that they think that that ad blocker. Most people, nobody uses ad blocker. Most everybody I know uses it. Maybe it's because I talk to a lot of people with tech stuff. But I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that hate all the ads and probably used at least one of the basics. Some of the ad blockers, when you instantly download it, it automatically blocks the ad the the ads that they have. Other ones, it takes you to click one. Actually, it's two buttons, and I can block every single promoted listing on eBay in two little clicks on almost any ad blocker out there. I don't care what they say. I did it in a video. I know it works. I know what I'm talking about, but 
That's why I will never do promoted listings again. I haven't done them since that time, since the ad blocker thing, and since they couldn't be honest with me in the in a live conference chat with them, and or they just don't know. I don't know what the answer is, but I knew more about it than they did, and that was sad because I don't know. I, I'm not in the business, you know. I know there are different departments, and they know their department, but. If you're going to come and talk about something specific like ad blocker and promoted listings, why don't you bring somebody into the conversation who knows how it works? You know, it was it was it was ridiculous. They don't want you to talk to anybody from the tech department, at least on issues like that. And if you've noticed, nobody from managed payments has said a word on any of eBay's live conference things at all. They devoted a whole episode of one of their live chats to something they're getting rid of, Mister uh, uh, Mister Lister. Uh, I don't, Turbo Lister, I don't remember. It, it used to be Mr. Lister, then it was Turbo Lister, I think. It's been a couple different in, uh, different names on it. But they, they're they doing an episode on that. But they're not bringing anybody on for managed payments. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to be grilled with the tough questions. I don't think they have an answer for it. I don't think they have a way in for coins other than keeping the PayPal. I don't think they have another way in for the the adult material or bullion or currency or tickets or any of that kind of stuff without keeping PayPal on the way it was. Or the tech support department can't figure it out, which you know, I'm not a I'm not a genius on coding or any of the that kind of stuff. I took or let's see, four or five languages I took. I'm sure I could figure out how to do it in a year and a half time if that's what I was working on, you know? A year and a half to fix that. It, it's crazy. Again, managed payments was announced a year and a half ago. It's not like something they've been, hand, you know, just now put out and they don't know what to do. This is something they started. I don't want to be complaining the whole episode. I'm sorry, folks. Red River uh, Group. Hang on. Ken Spiroff, how are you doing? Good evening. Didn't mean to miss anybody here. I do expect that you may get more sales only because of that, only if they advertise more. If they're not going to push eBay as a platform and put their name everywhere and, and bring in people, it's not going to matter. You, If you can't get them to the site, it doesn't matter you know, how they pay. If they don't go to the site, they're not going to buy anything anyway. And, and more and more people aren't going to eBay anymore. The number one place a lot of people search now is they'll just go and go to Chrome, open up a web browser, and type in what they're looking for. Because most people, at least the younger folks, know. I'm, uh, I guess my age and down, I don't know. I'm not, I don't want to get onto some age thing, but a lot of people don't do it. If my kid or anybody in his age group, either one of my kids, and they're a few years apart, they all just do a quick search and wherever they find it at and it looks like it's the cheapest after a few scrolls, they'll click on that. I don't care what site it's at. You know, so if you can't get them to the site and you're selling less items year after year after year, I don't think it's going to matter. So, so that's why I say if they're not, if they cut off, they cut advertising last year. This is a perfect example. eBay cut advertising expenses and cut a lot of the operating costs down on things that could have helped promote the site. It's a fact. It's in their, their breakdown if you read any of that stuff, their financials from last year. The financials for first quarter out as well, too. You can read those. Um, they cut advertising. And, and their their goal was the, the promoted listings. That was literally what they said was they were going to gain revenue from promoted listings. So they didn't care as much about advertising as they did promoted listings. So what does that tell you? That tells you that they're not too worried about bringing new people in there because they've got us to add some more fees to. That's all I take that as. You know, the the managed payments. They're going to get more money out of that every single year. Even if they don't do another dime, it's going to increase their bottom line by a couple billion dollars minimum from the way it looks. So, you know, I don't care if, if they don't care about it and they're not going to push the advertisements, you know, Amazon's everywhere. For them, the affiliate link was like the stupidest thing I've seen in, in basically free advertisement that they, they cut it. They cut some of the affiliate links when Amazon drastically almost made everybody get nothing off their affiliate links now. Some of them went from like 9 and I don't think it was 9%. Maybe it was 6 or 7% on some items down to 1% on what you would get. I'm not going to sit there and waste my time promoting something for 10 cents, you know. I mean, I the ones I promote are stuff I use, but you know, I don't make any money off of that. It's it's pennies. And I I mean it's it's pennies before and for them to cut it down, you know, it it makes no sense. eBay could have 
push that sir push that aspect and get every blog poster out there back to what amazon was giving them ebay could have given these people that they would be advertising ebay products left and right because there's people that just make and a lot of people tens of thousands probably make a good chunk of change i don't and i promise you that's the case make good chunks of change from doing blog posts and things like that and promoting listings specifically that they talk about so to not rake in the money, Amazon was doing it left and right. All you got to just go on Instagram, um, Facebook, any of that. You'll see people pushing stuff on certain sites. They're dropping links all over there on their Facebook group or whatever else, pushing items. It's for the affiliate links. But there's no, again, eBay could have had so much out of that, and, and they didn't. They, they squandered it again. They didn't see the value in giving us a few percentages of a sale that they may not have gotten otherwise. It, again, they blow my mind when they just don't think of anything logically. Yeah, but I would hope that it would help with sales. Again, it you can't. It's not going to help with sales if they don't bring new people onto the platform because the people there right now are paying with PayPal. You know, maybe you'll get some more on some rare items or something like that. It is a possibility. But again, you got to get the people to the site, and they're selling less items, you know, like 4%. I think last year it was like uh, 4.2 or maybe even 6%. Yeah, I think it was 6% overall uh, internationally. They sold 6.1% less items last year than the year before that. And the year before that was 2% down. So it's just growing. You know, you do stuff to bring that back. You don't do stuff to alienate sellers and you know cause other issues like that it just it makes no sense uh let's see here cheryl how are you doing i don't know anything about list perfectly uh cheryl or Shirley. i'm sorry um list perfectly the only thing i've seen is a lot of people pushing and talking about it on their their uh, YouTube channel, they probably get a percentage of the fees while they're talking about it. When I saw it, you only did like one listing at a time, and that's pretty much useless in my book. Um, you know, I don't know what everybody else has. I've never touched list perfectly. I've just seen a lot of people pushing it and putting links down. Again, that's, that's affiliate linking. People are getting money when they talk about things like that. I don't get a dime talking about Shopify or any of the sites or things that I do. I don't get a dime from any of those places. I have nothing to do with eBay, Amazon, HIP, any of those guys. I don't get a dime from anybody or any other site whatsoever like that. So list perfectly, I, I don't know anything about that. I would, wouldn't would use something that couldn't do all of mine and sync them. If it can't sync them, I don't want to put them on another site. The syncing is the best, the, the number one thing you need to do if you're going to cross list your sites. You need to sync everything together. Um, with Shopify, I can, I've already done it. We've imported our, all of our stuff. It's all in Ink, Inkfrog. So at Inkfrog, what happens is Inkfrog can hook up all of your listings to Shopify. It will import my eBay listings. Now, Shopify is like, it, it's, it's not, I don't know how to explain Shopify. Shopify is just a store. They sell you your own site in the use of your own site. I have a named website. I'm not going to give it out yet. Um, Patrons know how to get to it once it's live. But um, they they sell you this site, and it'll be your site. It'll be in whatever name you pick. You can I'm bringing my own uh, uh, email or my own .com address to it, and that's going to be my own spot. Shopify just facilitates all of that stuff going back and forth, basically, to get your site up. Now, Inkfrog... Um, will bring in eBay stuff into Shopify, my Shopify store, Don store. We'll just say Inkfrog brings the stuff into Don store. We don't even really need to worry about the Shopify aspect of it once everything's turned on because you're just looking at your own basic store. So with Inkfrog, it will also connect and sync with Shopify, meaning if it sells on eBay, it will pull it off of Shopify. I'm going to bring in, and I'll know tonight exactly how to do it because I'm going to have them on the phone tonight literally uh, like 30 minutes after the show is done and i have a video conference with them and i'm going to hook up all of my amazon listings with ebay so if i sell an item again on amazon it'll pull it off ebay and it will sync and pull it off shopify now shopify has channels on there i'm not going to do the amazon channel and the ebay channel because it has limitations that ink frog doesn't appear to have from all i've seen again i'll know for sure everything tonight and i'll go from there but with Shopify channels, I've now 
got approval for Facebook Marketplace and to sell on my own Instagram business page as well. So my listings will be pumped out to Instagram and Facebook and I can do, if I talk about something, I can show it right there in, in the the um, Instagram feed. Again, I'm not going to flood my feed with a bunch of it. I, the way it sounds is your Instagram items for sale isn't like in a separate spot. you got to click something. I, I haven't seen it in action. I don't know. Facebook Marketplace, I have seen. Again, I, I just got approved for it yesterday. We've never sold on Facebook, so I have no idea how it's going to go, but it doesn't cost me anything. So, again, eBay, fees. I can go to Instagram, Facebook, doesn't cost me a thing. I can go to Amazon. It's not going to increase my fees a dime unless I sell something because I already have a business account. I can bring in my Walmart, the same thing. I can bring in Etsy. Etsy is a direct... Um, import through Shopify. It's added into the main feature of Shopify. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to download. You don't have to get an app. Nothing. Etsy is right there. So some of it will be synced from Inkfrog in my store, eBay and Amazon. That will sync with Shopify and then Shopify will do the rest. Now, again, I'm going to have a big network here. So this is why it's taken me a, a lot of time. I, I tried Sellbrite and I didn't like all the, the issues with that. This seems much easier. And as well as with eBay, anything I have on my eBay platform in certain categories is picked up by a couple other sites. I use Hip Platform as one of them. I have Hip Postcards I do. 42 or 4,300 postcards I have on another site there. So even if I've got it all synced up with Amazon, if I sell it on Hip, it, it ends it on eBay. Oh, it already does that. So once it's ended on eBay, Inkfrog picks up that it's ended. It'll kill it on any other platform I have it that Inkfrog's hooked up to. It'll pull it off Shopify. Once it's pulled off Shopify, that syncs with Instagram, Facebook, Etsy, wherever else I may be selling it. So there's a lot of tools. There's a lot of cogs in, in the this working, but it all seems to everybody I've talked to, everything I've you know read, everybody I've read and talked to about this says that it does work. I know people personally I've talked to have used uh, Shopify for quite some time, their own site basically, and you know have good luck with it. Now again, you've got to bring in business to your site. You're it's, you're going to be a nobody if you can't bring in business. The Shopify aspect of it again, I, it's thirty bucks for me for Shopify a month. I could care less. You know, it's 30 more bucks for Ink Frog at this point. Um, and I've got ways to bring in business. And I don't care if I have to advertise on Google because I can go do Google target ads and use Google Shopping, which is a whole nother section if I use Google Ads. So as long as I'm using an ad once in a while, I have full access to Google Shopping, which means I can advertise for, let's, I, I use the buttons as an example, military buttons. I can use that in Target military platforms and sites which there's tons of them out there and advertise that i have the wares and then once people see how much i have that's part of the draw so i'm not going to go into the other marketing issues on that but i've looked into this a lot and you know it, it's not a huge factor if you if you do it right again i'm already paying for for etsy amazon i already pay for the business a lot of free sites are available if you didn't know it um so you know don't tie it all down. The most expensive site I, I'm on and will be on is eBay. It costs me more money than any other site, hands down, probably just to list like hundreds to one. You know, it, it's, 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 there's no competition whatsoever. eBay is by far no competition whatsoever. The highest pay era, expensivest site to list your items on. And that's a fact. The eBay can't deny that. They can try, but I don't know how you can do that because Again, Amazon, 40 bucks. you can list a million items if you want for that same $40. Doesn't cost you a dime over $39.99 as a business account. Uh, let's hop on down. The downvote scabs are here. Yeah, I'm told, I don't care. They can do what they want. With uh, it, it makes no sense that they waste their time, but you know I'm not going to really get get onto it. If you want to hit the like button for me and you're enjoying the conversation, please, please hit that thumbs up. Um, but on YouTube, uh, YouTube considers thumbs up or thumbs down interaction with the page. There is no difference. In fact, the back of the house for the thumbs down, it doesn't even. You have to look somewhere just to see that. They don't even point that information out anymore. The way they got the page set up, so I don't even worry about it anymore. I mean, I, I look at it once in a while we're on the show, but, you know, if that's what they want to do, I just I couldn't personally waste my time going anywhere just to hit a thumbs down. I'm, you know, whatever, whatever. 
I if I'm watching a TV show and I don't like it, I change the channel. I, I don't I don't know how that's complicated, but you know I guess it is. I like uh, tea cakes. Uh, I like Shopify. We use it, but the SEO is not so hot. Need to drive your own traffic. Yeah, that's exactly right. You need to drive your own traffic. So. If you've got clientele, and I do, I've got quite a few people that, that follow us and buy from us routinely. If just those customers come back and realize I've got so many more items that I don't list and the prices I'm willing to work with, where do you think they're going to go? That's all I can say. I mean, you do it how you want to do it, but I've got a big chunk of, of clientele. Um, once they know that you know it's a different game when I'm over there because I don't have the overhead I have over on eBay. My overhead on eBay is horrendous. It's almost like I got a brick and mortar being on eBay compared to being online anywhere else. That's how it feels like almost. It's like I almost got to pay rent and electricity to eBay at the cost I'm paying. You know, you could almost rent an apartment and pay for electricity and everything, have your own place at the cost eBay costs. You know. Uh, let's see here, corn fed. Just to be clear, I'm not. Hang on, my feed just disappeared. See if I can find out where I was at again. Corn fed 420, you're fine. Texas, even if it was you, you know, that's your prerogative, but I wouldn't waste my time doing it. Te Texas Hagler, how are you doing? Travis, I feel like eBay wants to get rid of all the little sellers and just have big companies. Maybe, we don't know. They're not going to tell us. We'll never know what they want to do. All I can say is... Whatever's going to give the CEO his biggest bonus, which again comes from mostly stock and stuff like that, and this the this uh, stockholders, that's what they're going to do. I think even if it's not going to do the company any good, because again, they sold StubHub and they just sunk all that money back into buying stock. They didn't sink it into in, in investments. They're cutting stuff. They they. Two people of the board are gone. Again, the person in IT who handled API is gone. The person who enrolled out, let's get third parties involved in here, is gone. That almost makes me wonder if they'd want to do away with allowing third parties to go on eBay. And if you saw another video I had just the other day, eBay says you can't put your items on another site. Still, in their own thing from three years ago, they never changed. So if you go back and watch the video from a few days ago, somebody was told that they couldn't list the same items they have on eBay somewhere else and they were they were they did something wrong, they got in trouble for that and they were pointed to that and told that they can't sell the same items on eBay that you're selling on another platform. You can't list an item on eBay and then list something nearly identical to it on another site either. They're not saying, you know, to steer somebody there. They're just saying you can't do that at all, even though eBay openly allows it. It makes no you know, again, this is just eBay doesn't go and check their own things. It's obviously a mistake because the videos that are attached to that same page are from 2017. And most of the knowledge or uh, stuff in the videos could have changed or has changed. I wasn't going to watch it. I watched a few moments, and they're obviously old videos because the terminology. And So, you know, they don't update their own stuff on their own policies. And when they do update their policies, they make them so vague that they can... They can steer the policy to do anything they want to somebody if they don't like you. I'm not saying they do that, but it gives them the opportunity to be selective in how they they handle a complaint or something if you violate a certain policy because it's not clear enough. It used to be. They used to give specific examples on many of the policies. Now it's just like a broad, generalized statement that, that's... It would even be hard to do anything with the statement in the court of law would just defer you back to their user agreement is basically what it would what it would do and then they could say and which it does say in the user agreement they can change anything anytime they want so again it's just ways to get around you know you trying to go after them or you complaining because it it's so vague i mean it's it's beyond vague tea cakes shopify is the way forward for sure lots of open source apps does everything you need, bit like I say, need to have a regular audience as the SEO is lacking? Yeah, fully agree, fully agree. We've got plans in place, and I don't care if i got to pay. Uh, the money I'm saving from eBay, I just sink it in advertising if that's the case. And I'll still keep my items enough that sell on, e on eBay. I'll pull the stuff that's older and crank it on over to the other place and keep a certain percentage of stuff. Applebee's Attic Treasure, how are you doing? Yeah, I do have, a, as I said, I'm talking to Ink Frog tonight. They only have night conferences. I didn't make any sense, but that's fine. Hey, Craig Landshark Picker's in the house. 
He's got a pretty good channel. I have watched many of his videos. He's even been in a video of mine. So if you get a chance, check out Craig there. Land Shark Picker, he is a admin on my page too, if you can see. Jason Blake, how are you doing this evening? Karen Mary, I lived in Florida for 10 years and worked at the Mouse for 10 years. Jaya, how are you doing this evening? Yes, that survey was crazy long and seemed to focus on where else we were selling. I was also per surprised that they didn't include Depop in the survey. I had to add them. I added some too. They didn't include HIP or anything like that. And HIP Platforms, HIP Platforms has been growing if you haven't paid any attention. For those who don't know, type in HIP and then Postcard and you will see HIP Platform. They have uh, HIP Stamps, HIP Postcards, and HIP Comics and they're supposed to be advancing it from there. There are some ins you can do on there, too. Um, I'm not going to go into detail, but there's some things you can do on there that you'd be surprised that, you know, anyway, we won't go into all that today. But um, there's a lot of stuff they're not paying attention to. They allowed them to, to sync up, mind you, as a third-party uh, hip platform, but they're apparently not paying any attention to what's going on because I'm selling quite a bit of stuff on hip uh, postcard-wise. It, it's catching up to eBay, you know? I mean, they're pushing and promoting, and they send out emails and messages and all kinds of stuff through the HIP platform, and they've got tens of millions of postcards, apparently, on there now. And they're reaching out to people to give you free things, something eBay would never do. Uh, again, HIP reached out to me to offer me something free that won't cost me a dime that will increase my sales, they're saying, by two to three times what it is now. So, again, I'm listening to them. I want to hear what they have to say. Uh, let's slide down here. Hey, Bob, I never do surveys. I feel like take my time to improve their bottom line, not mine. I like to hear where they're going with it, I guess, is the only thing. Sometimes the surveys can give you an idea on what they're thinking. And obviously, this one did. It fully, it wasn't to help us. It wasn't to see how they were doing and what they could improve. It was to see where their business is going. That's all it was. You know, they can say it's anything they want, but I'm not stupid. Anybody who takes that survey will know what it is. Again, I'll probably still take them. I want to know what they're thinking. And their think their thoughts aren't with, with what a, a logical person's thoughts are. They're just worried about who they need to go after company-wise. And Again, if you're selling more on Amazon, it's just they're, they're already steering like they want to be Amazon. And that's probably what the case is. They're going to see that a lot of people sell on Amazon. And in some cases, they, they're higher rated... Amazon is than them. You know, I rated eBay very, you know, at as low as I can get in some of the categories. Fees, it was all the way, I couldn't go low enough on the fees, and, you know, and in some of the other aspects, you know. Uh, let's see here. Hang on, I'm sorry. Nathan King, are you looking at creating Ink Frog listings exclusively now? Um, we haven't gotten that far. As I said, I'm talking to Ink Frog tonight. I've got a 30 minute time block with Ink Frog. Um, and that's another thing. Ink Frog offers you a 30-minute phone conversation, free and clear, you know, to see what you think and answer all your questions on there. I'll have somebody on a video chat. I guess they can show me in front of me, too, what's going on and how to do certain things. Caballero de la Eternidad, giving them free research and development. May be the case. It may be the case. But again, it does give me some ideas and it it reaffirms my thoughts that I need to keep going with bringing my stuff all over besides just eBay. Again, I, I, I own my listings now because of how eBay is doing things. I don't trust them anymore. After they lost my photos, millions, they lost, I think it was like 38 million um, YouTube or uh, uh, eBay users' photos. It was hundreds of millions of photos or some huge amount of photos. And I wrote it down. I, I still have it in, a, in my little notebook over there, but... You know, they admitted, one of the people on the phone admitted that to me and told me the numbers. I even wrote them down and asked her to repeat them to make sure I was getting them correct. Apparently, there was an internal memo, and she was reading off a memo that was passed around. I don't know if she was supposed to give me the information, but I did get it from eBay personally. And I had to have them repeat the numbers because they were so high. So I don't trust them. I don't trust their technology. And their fix for it was to give you a few hundred listings, and most people didn't have enough time because they were only good for like two or three days or some screwy thing. You know, for me, it didn't, it, they just rolled right into my listings. Unicorns don't lie. How are you doing? Chop, chop, busy, busy, work, work, bang, bang. How are you doing? Let, let me, let's stop for just a second here. Let's talk about PayPal for just a minute. Again, I've never had really many issues with them. They've saved me on, on several occasions, but this one really got under my skin a little bit here. As people know, I've been buying mass quantities of buttons. 
and one of the invoices that was that I was paying off on it had the word Iran because there are some British buttons made in the 1890s or 1910 era um, made by a British company Furman and they were made for the Iranian government again it wasn't it, it was run as a monarchy back then it wasn't run as an Islamic state and again I'm not trying to criticize or say anything about any religion or anything else. this this has nothing to do with anything like that this has to use had to do with me having the word Iran in one of the invoices so they flagged a listing and, and they said it was just some random thing they did they didn't flag the thousands of dollars in one invoice they didn't flag all these high dollar ones they they flagged uh, a small dollar value when compared to the other ones from from a, the same person mind you and they insisted it had nothing to do originally with Iran but once they realized and looked into it then that was popped up as Iran was the issue. Well, you know, you can't just call uh, PayPal. It took me hours to deal with this whole issue over this. They locked part of my account and the whole works. Now, I don't keep, I, there's always a couple thousand in there, but I don't keep a whole bunch more than that in there. And I went through the message thing. No one got back. I filled out what they, I thought they wanted because, again, all they said there was an issue with a, a transaction from a certain day. That's all they told me. You know, and I don't, I'm not going to dig through a thousand emails. I get so many emails, you wouldn't believe how many emails I get. And I figure it's going to be on the site. No information on what I'm even supposed to supply them, mind you. I do the chats twice, nothing. I finally spent like 20 minutes trying to track down a phone number through their, their platform. And I call, and the lady on the phone's telling me, well, this is just some random thing that just happened to pull. And then when they looked into it, they saw the word Iran in there. Now, She's telling me that's the case, and I'm saying, well, that doesn't seem very, very logical, considering that I just, I just paid the same person $1,900, you know, two days before that, you know, it made no sense, and uh, you know, there was similar terms, just not Iran in there, and I said it makes more sense that they flagged it for the Iran. And she said, no, 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 that's not the case, that's not the case, you know, they'll look into it. It's going to take 24 to 48 hours now, another 24 or 48 hours now that I've supplied information. And again, all the information was originally on the very first invoice. It said exactly what it was. It said buttons. It said age. It was German, Japanese. I mean, it, it was it was a huge invoice, but there were, it, it literally broke everything down. Line item, cost per item, everything. Everything was on there. I, I'm dealing with a big business, basically. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, I finally get an answer back um, from their uh, management department because now I'm, I'm told, told the lady I'd like to talk to a manager and I, I said the same thing in there the person who comes on and says well your item was flagged because of the word of Iran and that was why it was originally flagged so the lady on the phone lied to me or they're not telling her but either way I was right to begin with you flagged it because of the word Iran it's not illegal to sell something vintage from Iran it's not illegal to sell something from Iraq it's not illegal to sell things from a lot of countries Cuba it is um, North Korea probably is. I'm sure there's a few other ones, but I, this we're talking about a monarchy, the Iran monarchy. These these have crowns on them. The, you know, royal ciphers are on the top of these. They're not some. It was just insane that they caused hours of time out of my day, and it's already hectic as it is. All to say, oh, we're sorry. There was nothing to it. Our mistake. We'll take it off. Is there anything else we can do for you? That was the end of the day. So. You know, that was pretty irritating that they're scanning our personal invoice data to pull out one little word that they flagged for whatever reason. You know, it makes me wonder if their, you know, government's got their fingers and they're scanning it and they turn over certain things to the government. I know they turn over taxes, which I don't care because I report everything, but it was annoying that they did that. Let's just say that. I was hoping it was to find out what additional services J I uh, additional services we as sellers wanted or suggested on areas of improvement. There was nothing specific. They had some questions on what's most important or least important to you, and it was like an eight-part question, and they had a couple of those. And it was just, and they were they're using it's a psychological survey as well too, because what they do, and I've taken a lot of these when you're a manager, they give you like psych tests. Some of these were geared towards psych tests because they used basically the same statement, but they reworded it, and they reworded and moved the, the, the spot they were in out of the four options around and trying to see what you would say again. So it, it was, they're, they're trying to steer and see where they want to spend 
money would be my guess. And it was some of it was related. So do you pay for this service? Do you, would you use this service? Again, they're all sound like paid stuff. So they're trying to figure out what they can charge us is all it seems like, you know, and where their money's where their their competition is the strongest. You know, maybe it's market research. I don't know. Again, if you're enjoying the conversation, please hit the like button. I got 160 some odd people on right now and only 57 likes. Grace, how are you doing? Minnesota, huh? We worked with somebody from uh, Minnesota for quite some time. Uh, let's see here. Black Crystal Dice, how are you doing? Duncan's way down tonight. Started to work on fourth quarter now. Listing extra items. Sales are great. Yeah, as I said, we're already, as soon as I get this, this Shopify, all that stuff straight, it's all fourth quarter as always. Summer, I always do fourth quarter stuff, always. You know, I have one month where I don't worry about so much of that, but the rest of it, it's like that. Fourth and first quarter are as bu busy as, as they are. Both of them kind of uh, about the same. This year, uh, first uh, quarter was even busier than fourth quarter of last year. So our sales are still going up. My numbers are still up. I'm still on a, a steep incline right now. I'm not worried about sales or anything like that. That's why if I pay a little bit and have to advertise, I'm not going to worry about it. Because again, I'll be saving hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of maybe even a thousand bucks on eBay if I'm not listing as many items that they're going to charge me five cents for over every 10,000 one. You know, the listing fees are part of your business cost. If you can lower those by moving stuff around, that's what your goal should be. There's no such thing as site loyalty in my book anymore. There's no way eBay is loyal to you. They're loyal to the pocketbook of the stockholders and the CEO, CFO, and all those people. That's their responsibility. That's who they owe everything to is the, the, the stockholders. So... I wouldn't. Our 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 uh, job as a business owner is to be loyal to our business, and if our business can branch out and go to other sites and do better on another site, that's what you do. You, there's no, you don't owe eBay anything. I mean, you paid for the service that you got. I mean, I I don't I don't see as I owe eBay anything. If anything, they owe us something for all the fees they are constantly doing now, the aggravation. They never did compensate people really for hours of work people had to do to recover photos. They didn't even offer you a way to say, hey, this is how you can get your photos back, which there was ways that we ha ourselves are the ones who had to figure it out. You know, their, their little I'm so sorry thing doesn't help at all if you've lost a thousand different listings worth of photos. You know, I still find photos, and this is quite some time ago. What was it, two years ago or so? I'm still finding missing photos. I didn't. It wasn't worth going back in and, and messing with the model SD. As we do the, the Shopify, we're going through a ton of listings. So some of our listings will be deleted. We'll combine them into lots, and then we'll roll the better stuff out as well in some areas, at least on eBay. you know. Carlene, how are you doing? Hope everyone is well. Looking at spreading out more. Has anyone heard of Antique Mark? I have not heard of Antique Mark, I do not think. Maybe if I saw the site, I might have, but... The small sites, and I have a video on this too, you need to look at the, their, their business first before I would ever invest a dime on another platform. What I've done when I do that, and I, it's in a video, and I wish I could remember, I think it's something about choosing a site to sell on, I think is in the title. Um, if you search my videos for that in the, the search box, you should be able to find it. It's something along that line. But the point is, I, I research the sites, and I look at volume. I look at uh, bounce rate and things like that. How, how many pages does a person look at if they go to one of these sites? And like Bonanza and all these other sites, they were minuscule compared to um, eBay. If, if you're saying this art mark is, or what, what was it called? I'm sorry, where was it? Uh, where did I see that? Antique Mart. They got to be so far low on the the um, traffic that it's not even funny. I don't. I, I personally, just by the sheer fact that it doesn't show up in any of my reports and I've never heard about it, I wouldn't list on it personally because of that reason. They don't have enough draw to the site. Bonanza doesn't advertise very well. There's a lot of sites like that. There was another one that, that there was a bunch of other YouTube eBayers talking and trying to push, and I can't remember the name of it. It was a bad name to begin with, and somebody even asked me if I'd help promote it, and I, I wouldn't touch it because they had no no traction in the market whatsoever. I mean, it was they didn't even register as anything on any of the reports compared to any even the smaller sites. I mean, they're, they they I think it had like I can't 
Prairie Grit. That's the one I, that people were trying to push off. And it had no advertisement, no nothing, no... It was a joke from comparing it if you look at their numbers. I, I look at all the numbers. You want to look at traffic, bounce rate, how long they stay on the platform, how many pages they look at. All that stuff you need to look at before you decide to go on a platform. Because you're investing time. Even if it doesn't cost you anything, you've got time invested in learning how that platform works. I would rather spend a tenth that time just to figure out if it's worth even listing on the site and go from there. Because most of the time it's just not worth going to that other site. Like Ruby Lane. Ruby Lane's an okay site, but the fees and the traffic just just deters me from doing it. I've talked to people who do it. I know somebody who does it right now. But he does specific items. Some items sell better on there. Now, Antique Mart, maybe they got some niche that there's one little category that does extremely well. Like I sell on a postcard-only site, and I do fairly well on that, considering. Considering I have nothing to do. All i got to do is mail out something once you know when they come in. I don't have to keep up. If I change prices, I do it on eBay, and they automatically sync with HIP. Same thing on hip, stamps, and comic books. They all do the same thing. They auto-sync. And the sync is perfect. I've never had an issue where something sold on one platform and it didn't show up in my unsold listings. Not only that, when it sells on the hip platform, it puts the word sold as the first word in your title. It amends your title with sold. So if you want to know if you missed one, all you got to do is search your own items for the word sold. Boom. It's a, it's a two-second process. I've never seen one easier. Whoever come up with the sync between eBay and that, that one works perfect. I've never had an issue with it whatsoever, and it's cheap. It's seven-something a, a month, I think, I spend when we buy it a uh, year in advance. So I paid for a year worth of listing, as many as I want. I think it was, um, I don't know, 70 or 80 bucks, something like that. It was, it was dirt cheap. It was a tenth of what I spend sometimes just on listing fees on a, one month on eBay. And that was for the entire year, the exact same amount of postcards I have on eBay as I have on that site. Uh, let's hop down to some more questions. Uh, where'd, where'd I go? My county goes green in PA Friday. Hope the flea market's open this weekend. Galaxy 5000. I'm not rushing. I, I got a whole bunch of stuff to sell. Those buttons will keep me busy for a year or two. I've got... I got another like 40 pounds in yesterday. I was going through buttons um, in my sleep, literally in the bed last night, I guess you'd say. I got a lot of buttons. I had somebody said, you're not going to make any money off those. I've sold buttons for 20 plus years. Well, probably 30 years. I sold buttons off before online was online. That's how long ago I go back with buttons. I've always made made money on the, the type of stuff I got in the buttons. And if you've seen some of the videos, you've seen some of the buttons. Um lot of money. I mean a lot of money in buttons. And the ones that I got, I've in, in all my life I've never seen any like these in my entire life. This is the best score I have ever got, I think, of anything. Well, not of anything. I've gotten some records and stuff. And I'll probably be showing one single button in this lot is worth over two grand. I just found a CS staff officer. Confederate State staff officer button. Very rare one. Undug. It's a original without a doubt it's got a back mark that's not faked it's 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 the real deal it's the most expensive button i've gotten in probably like 15 or 20 years and it's it's going to pay for a third because we've invested a lot more i've been spending a lot of money on them but it's going to be get me back a third of my investment from one single button and i can probably sell it you know tonight if i really wanted to to a couple people that i deal with regularly um I sell them stuff. I mean, it's it's their military guys around here are gung ho on stuff like this. I know people locally that buy. I go to the military shows. You've seen me at the military shows. I've done a haul video at one of the shows. Um, anyway, uh, let's see here where are we at. Hey, Aaron, how are you doing tonight? I have you. You rem every time I see you on there, I could saying I'm going to spend the time to get on Instagram again. I've been so busy with this Shopify and the eBay threw me for the loop with the API and it's just been it's been off the chain and even like I said when I'm done with this this live show here I'm going to have to get off in, in less than say 15 minutes. I got a 30 minute thing with with um, Ink Frog still tonight that I've got to um, pull up my question list. Uh, where are we at? Travis W. Red River Group, he's addressing 150 on McCrary over the last couple days and a big old goose egg on eBay. Depends on what you sell, of course, obviously, but I've had a ton of people complaining that eBay is 
relisting automatically stuff they've sold left and right. And they're not on any other platforms but eBay. Now, I would have said, you know, maybe a couple people saying that I may think maybe they did something wrong or they, they relisted items from the wrong spot or who knows. There's stuff that can happen if you're not paying attention. But I've had far too many people tell me that. Dozens and dozens of people. I can't imagine at all that dozens of dozens of people are wrong. Occam's Razor says the most logical thing is that eBay's doing it. It makes no other sense. You know, I don't see all these other random people making it up. And the other thing which I know they are doing, which I don't think should be right, is they're adding best offer to people's listings after, and I've talked about this, after they've been up, after they decided not to use that option, eBay's adding it on for them. I hate when somebody comes in and tries to micromanage my personal business by doing stuff that gets them, um, I guess it gets them money quicker, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what eBay gets out of it, it, it other than thinking you got to do best offer. I don't think you have to do best offer. And there's some items that I don't want to do best offer, offer in, but I want the choice to do it myself. I don't think any site should dictate how you run your own items. I mean, that's just crazy for them to even consider doing that. That shows total lack of, of, of respect for the people who sell on the platform. Basically saying you're an idiot and you don't know how to set up your own listings. We better do it for you. That's just, it, it, it shows no respect to the people who made eBay eBay. You know, just another bad decision. Uh, Balta have pretty much uh, migrated to, to Amazon. Again, there, there we go again. It's it's like that. Most people I talk to are realizing Amazon's only 40 bucks a month. You don't have to pay unless you sell something, so you don't initially have to worry about anything in fees. Even with Etsy, you're paying uh, 20 cents for a four-month list on Etsy. On Amazon Homemade by Amazon, which I have too, I don't have that. It's the same fees, nothing, thirty nine ninety nine. So, you know, where am I going to list that? And Amazon has twice the viewership of any day of the week than eBay and probably four or five times the viewership than Etsy. And it's international. You know, I can't go wrong. Uh, Craig, Landshark Picker, eBay would be better off changing their model by just upping the final value fee sum and removing store subscriptions. I'd be fine with that. I would be fine with that too. That's a good suggestion, but I would be fine with that. I would I the, the best thing eBay could do is do like Amazon. Either do them all free, you pay a little more if you do the free version or you can do, you know, 39.99 and have the business plan. I'm not paying for my listings. I'm paying for a business plan on Amazon. Craig does Amazon, I'm sure if I'm not mistaken. You know, it's a no-brainer. Where where do I pay the least, and where do things sell religiously for more money? And it's almost always Amazon. I sell vintage items on Amazon. I'm I'm on gated and collectibles, historical, entertainment, vintage vinyl. I've got a bunch of on gating on there. I can sell all kinds of stuff on Amazon. Um, so the only other thing too, if you're going to do Shopify, the API for Amazon on Shopify cannot do the categories like collectibles and stuff. Just FYI. So you've got to find another way around it if that's your route. Just FYI. I didn't want to leave that out. And one other thing, in the video I talk about Shopify, which part of that was filmed like a month ago at one point, Shopify was offering a 90-day for free plan. It ended the last day of May. Unfortunately, I did not know that. I should have called that out. I do apologize for that. It was unintentional to tell everybody they had a 90-day plan or 90 days for free. Because I didn't know it ended. It ended like the day or the day before or the day after I put that video up. Hadn't hadn't a clue because again I already had it. Didn't think that they were stopping it so soon. No idea. It's been running for months. I turned it. I was going to do it a month before and I didn't do it when it was free too or, or the 90 days. So it is only 14 days right now. Somebody else uh, brought this up and I suggested to somebody else if you still want to try and get it, you might try you know, uh, going to Twitter to their business page and asking them if there's any way you can get it. You really need the time. You're slow to understand. Whatever you want to tell them, you might still be able to get the 90-day. They still may have a link up somewhere that we just can't see. Just FYI. A lot of companies still have that. Like when um, the new Windows was not going to do any more free downloads, there were still pages that you could do free downloads of the newest Windows version for free. And they had like uh, the accessibility one ran till just months ago where you, if you had like um, vision impaired or something, you could still get it. You didn't have to, you just had to state it is what they were saying. But anyway, uh, where are we at? The Stun Law one. How are you doing this evening? 
Now, sh again, Shopify, you have to draw business to your own site, too. So keep that in mind. It's not just going to be, boom, everybody's coming to your site. No one's going to know where you're at on Shop. No one's going to know who you are at all without you doing something on your own to get it. I'm just going to tell you that right off the bat. I'm not as much worried on, as of right this minute, on getting all the sales to my own site. We're more worried about getting the sales on other platforms at the same time and being able to sync them. So I'm moving in stages. The first stage is to get them all over the place. And then the next stage is to draw them in. Again, I've already got advertisements printed up that's going to go in, sealed in every single piece of merchandise I ship out, advertising that right this very second. So, you know, it's in-house. I already got them here. So I'm going to be pushing for that, but that's not my, my goal this year. My goal through this year, through it into fourth quarter, is to have all of them on these, these platforms and to be able to list in one specific spot, whether we do it in Inkfrog or wherever I, I end up doing it, to list one item at, at a time, and then it automatically gets broadcast everywhere. Of course, you'll have to click a button, but I mean, that's about it. Uh, cold nights here, but the days are okay after 10 a.m. Sun is warming up now, just after 9 a.m. It's hard to think of being at 9 a.m. right now, and it's just sun's, well, sun's not going down yet, but it's getting close. Hey, Richard, how are you doing this evening? We are doing well. Tomorrow again, just a reminder for Shopify, or for, um, I'm talking about Shopify so much. For Patreon, I have live show tomorrow at 2, probably the same length, probably an hour and a half or so tomorrow. Um, again, 2 Eastern Standard Time, my time. This time next year. Rodney, how are you doing? Hang on, my feed's frozen. Yeah, my feed's totally frozen. Won't scroll or anything. Oh, well. We'll just go on from there. Um, I'm going to have to cut it off in just a few minutes anyway. Again, I do have Inkfrog on tonight. Uh, we'll be discussing how to do it all. I'm going to ask him every question. I already got them written down right now. And I'm going to ask him anything I can possibly think about. All the I've, I've read through all the complaints from their uh, feedback page. And I'm going to ask him a bunch of questions on that as well, too. I'm going to ask him anything I can think about that's going to <clears throat> benefit what I'm doing on there. Uh, again, Inkfrog's just an application. It's like the bridge between eBay and Amazon and then eBay and Shopify. Shopify is not... Shopify is just a service, basically. When I say Shopify, I'm really meaning my own personal store. I just happen to set it up through Shopify. You could use Wix or, you know, there's probably 50 other places you could set up your own uh, site. Um, WooCommerce, somebody else mentioned that's another one. I looked into half a dozen of them, and Shopify, ease-wise, seems to be the best. You know, if, you know, that's just my choice. Most any of them, you're going to have to, you know, mess with SEO. You're going to have to do some sort of advertisement or draw to get people into your store. I've already got, you know, Google accounts. I've already signed up for Google Shopping, um, you know. So I, I've got everything in place. Literally, once I get off the phone with um, the lady I'm talking to tonight from Insta or uh, from uh, Inkfrog, I might even click the button and, and have it sync up right afterwards with Amazon and Shopify as well. Um, again, I already have all my listings in uh, Shopify store. I showed them in the video. If you were in uh, uh, Patreon, you saw a lot more of that, but um, they're already there. I already own a copy of them, and they look, actually, it looks nicer than, and displays nicer than on eBay. It really does if you looked at that uh, closely. They're nice, clear. Again, it's the same images from there. And that's another reason I say that if you're going to list something, list it so it can go on Amazon. Uh, even if you never use Amazon, I only say that because Amazon standards are pretty much universally accepted. 85% of the every image you have on Amazon has to be of the item. The other 15% can only be white. If you do it that way with all white backgrounds and the percentages and follow along quality images, those images can cross list to any other platform without issue. That is the key. So treat it like you're doing them for Amazon whether you do Amazon or not that's the standard that I go by it's universally accepted on every platform you won't have any complaints or issues or any policy violations by following Amazon's photo rules that's a fact that's, that's the one I use so anything that we've done in the last couple of years it's always set to be able to list on Amazon again because that's our goal that is where I am going with this 
is to full fledge everything I own on Amazon. Again, because it's free to list, free to list after you know you pay the business um, fee, the thirty nine ninety nine. I don't have to worry about a nickel every time I want to list something on eBay. I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about all the other BS that goes on with that. And, and somebody asked me, do you get a lot of returns on collectibles on Amazon? I've never had one, never, never a single one. I've never had a damage, never had a loss, never had a complaint. Um, of any kind on any one of the vintage items I've ever sold on there, whether they be records, paper, toys, used items. We're talking used items. People ask me all the time, well, you can't sell used items on Amazon. You sure as heck can, and you have been able to for a very long time. I can sell collectibles, historical items used. I can sell 200-year-old items. Nothing has to be uh, NOS, uh, new old stock. And I say NOS, to me, that's a general term. That could just as easily be an RA item, you know, retail arbitrage. It's new. That's the point. Um, whether it's on a shelf or not, to me, it's all NOS. New, old stock. You know, old stock set on a shelf. When, when you see something on a shelf, it's been around probably for nine months to a year and a half, in all honesty. Anything you see on a shelf, other than food, just because they make it so far in advance. So, in technic technically, anything that's new has been, it's not really new, it's new old stock because it's been around forever. You know, a year and a half to me is a fairly long time. All the toys are bought years in advance, you know, a year and a half in advance at a toy fair. I've been to them before. I've went to a couple of toy fairs. I um, went when I worked at Disney once before even too. So I think we'll end it at that. Again, I've got a few things to do before um, I chat with these folks. Um, if anybody's interested, leave some comments down below. I'll tell you what Inkfraud said. If anybody's interested as well on what Hit Platform has going on, <clears throat> I may do a video on both of those too. I'm going to ask Josh from Hit Platforms, you know, if they're interested, maybe he'd want to even come on the channel. I don't know. I I like Hip, and they have been no issue. I, I, eBay is a totally different story. There, I don't I don't believe half of what they say anymore. So I I can't respect what they say. So these guys reached out to me. They were very polite, very kind. Um, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Maybe I maybe I'll talk to them about doing something. Maybe not. Maybe I can get a discount and give away some discounts or something, or some, maybe a free month or something. I don't know. I'll try and ask. Either way we go. But I do appreciate everybody coming on tonight. I am going to end it here. I do, as I said, I'm, I've got another long little while to be up tonight, and got quite a bit of work still to do. So I've been up since 4:30. Cut the grass by 7 7:15 or so. May, uh, neighbors probably didn't like it on the one side because you're not supposed to do it that early, but the only time I could do it. So anyway, I appreciate everybody coming on. I thank you very kindly. Hope everybody's doing well. I do have a video ready for tomorrow and again. Tomorrow at 2 on Patreon. Those on Patreon, live show tomorrow. Going to be a good one.